All right, uh, I guess, is this uh, audio okay? You can hear me all right, great. So, uh, hi, my name is Adam Simon, I'm with Sorora. I'd like to talk to you about our uh, brain health uh, assessment company. Um, as uh, the former captain of my uh, football and lacrosse teams, as a father of uh, two uh, teenage boy athletes, um, as a former biomarker expert in a large pharmaceutical company, it became clear that brain health assessment in general and concussion detection technology in particular was very much lacking. So at Sorora, what we're trying to do is move from a subjective clinical impression to an objective biosensor-based brain health assessment. So um, our, in, in a single sentence, we're really trying to make affordable neurodiagnostic information available out in the field to a non-specialist. And that field could be a football field or a gym, could be a pharmaceutical biotech company, could be a pediatrician's office or a geriatrician's office, which are not specialists in brain health assessment, or from a military defense context, it could be near the combat theater. Uh, here's a prototype. I'll be giving you a uh, live demo in just a moment. So uh, we have a, a deep team with a lot of uh, neuroscience and uh, clinical expertise as well as business and marketing. Um, you'll notice there's a theme here. Uh, I'm a world expert in Alzheimer's disease biomarkers from my days at Merck Research Laboratories. Um, we're trying to move from that to traumatic brain injury and concussion, which happens at a much faster uh, time scale, and so the ability to innovate is much, much larger. Um, we uh, got into the GE Startup Health three-year entrepreneurship program, and uh, we have funding from Ben Franklin Technology Partners of the Northeast uh, Pennsylvania, as well as a seed round uh, from a bunch of angel investors in the early half of the year, and we're now going out to raise a Series A round that we'll talk about shortly. So um, we have a lot of business and scientific advisors. Some of these folks, like uh, Kai, are our world expert, number one in the Alzheimer and traumatic brain injury biomarker space. Uh, Sam here in uh, Manhattan at uh, Mount Sinai. And uh, Steve Martino, a neurologist in private practice, uh, owns four electrodiagnostic labs, two in hospitals and two in their clinical settings, helping to guide how to implement this in a meaningful and, and direct way. Um, but uh, let's follow the customer. In this case, it's neurologist and neuropsychologist. Um, but we want to make the technology simple and easy to use so that a certified athletic trainer, a school nurse, two fourth graders could collide on the playground at school. They could get a brain health assessment at the school nurse. The biosensors would move the data to the cloud. They get processed, brought back for interpretation, and then pushed back to the point of care. Um, but you really have to follow the money, and in this case, who's going to pay? And it's really the insurers and payers. We've been re reimbursed by CMS and two private payers so far. Um, we're interested in collaborating with large leagues like the NFL, FIFA, uh, the NHL, where concussions and traumatic brain injuries are common, as well as helping to ensure uh, 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 large companies like Walmart, Exxon, and other uh, self-insureds. So um, from a, a direct pay concussion market, if we look at the number of athletes that are out there in the professional space, there's around 16,000. The NCAA here in the United States tells us there's about 460,000 collegiate athletes. Uh, the National Federation for uh, High School Sports tells us there's about 7.7 .7 million high school athletes. And then we see that there is, in the sort of 6 to 13-year-old range, an additional 27 million. This is a pretty large, annualized, addressable market. And um, we've worked with the Wharton School to refine numbers uh, for the European market opportunity as well. Um, so if we look at concussion, how much could we actually capture from a bottoms-up estimate to, over the course? It looks to be a very sizable market opportunity looking at the U.S., Europe, and Canada. Um, we also have opportunities in uh, Asia, uh, South America, and other spaces as well. Um, there's a large uh, gorilla here, Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment, where I did a lot of work at Merck Research Laboratories. The challenge there is that that's a very slow neurodegenerative process, not the best place to go first if we want to move fast and innovate. Still an opportunity, but um, we've deprioritized that to second or third. So in concussion management today, the state of the art, follow my finger, 
um, is subjective, typically inaccurate, very much inaccessible where it's needed, not very comprehensive, and highly non-standardized. These items don't travel very well to the sideline, in the locker room, near the gymnastic mat, or out into the combat theater. So what Sorora is doing is really trying to fill that gap with a portable, objective, multimodal, biosensor-based assessment. We're going to centrally process the data in the cloud, and we're going to have it be computer delivered so that it becomes a standardized and equivalent here in New York City, Shanghai, Paris, or Taipei. Our real value proposition as I started is moving from a subjective clinical impression, state of the art today, to an objective biosensor based assessment as we move forward. So maybe at this point I'll take a moment and show you our clinical prototype. It goes on very quickly like this. The active sensor fits here. The ear is uh, reference and ground. And what I'll show you here is if you can see a trace moving across, voltage is on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, and these are my brain waves. The idea would be to scan an uh, athlete or a subject, use the information in the raw brain wave information to help determine if they're injured or non-injured. When we give them a um, balance test, and the balance test also consists of having your hands on your hips and standing with your eyes closed or standing on one foot, if we put a three-axis accelerometer in the headset and objectify all those motions, we can then bring it from a subjective clinical impression to an objective biosensor-based measurement. When we give the athlete or subject an auditory task, we can open the microphone and record their voice and then do signal processing on that. So the whole aim in, in our last modality that we've got proof of concept on but don't yet have integrated is eye tracking. Can we measure the position of the eyes as they're given tasks and challenges, and can we see some biomarker dysfunction or signatures that allow us to then help figure out who's injured, who's not, who has mild cognitive impairment, who doesn't, who in a developmental case has autism, and who's healthy and normal. So here is a Lehigh University athlete wearing the setup, a cell phone I just showed you. The various modes are there. The data is then pushed, encrypted, and then pushed to the cloud where it's decrypted, analyzed, and a report is generated, pushed to a physician for a remote interpretation, pushed back to the point of care, and right now our cloud-based analytics are taking a little under one minute. And the investor would be getting uh, profits to the company come from scan fees, whether it's on a per scan basis or subscription basis, as well as disposables and the actual electronic devices which get reused. So we have multiple business models. Um, here's a quick uh, view of how the assessment works in the clinical context at Lehigh. We do some quality control. The athlete does some assessment of symptoms and cognition. I mentioned the balance task. You can see her eyes are closed, but while she's being challenged to do the balance task, we're measuring her brain waves, and in an updated version, we'll have an accelerometer in the headset. And then finally, we try to um, develop some tasks that don't require the cooperation of athlete. So much like a treadmill test for the heart challenges the organ, we put the athlete or the subject through a battery of tasks, probing the auditory cortex, visual cortex, prefrontal and executive function. Um, we have uh, 11 pilots with over uh, 1,000 scans. I'll highlight Lehigh University Sports Medicine and uh, Mount Sinai here in Manhattan. Um, and then um, just in the last couple of weeks, we've re released our first product, which is without the headset, we have so much psychological and neuropsychological data being collected that we're able to um, release that. Um, and there are, at least in the U.S. here, reimbursement codes, CPT codes, 96103 and 96120. Um, last fall, we had CMS and two private payers pay under a prototype. We now created a commercial cloud-based deployment and are starting to bring customers in. We were just at the American Academy of Pediatrics trying to recruit pediatricians to start using this in their practice. Um, our competition, if we look at the uh, portability and ease of use, is a function of the objectivity of the diagnostic information. What you can see is Sorora uh, distinguished itself in that we're both portable and easy to use, 
as well as having highly objective information being provided from not one, but several different modes. As you can see in the logo, we really want to put the brain at the center and build an array of biosensors around the brain and come at it from a multitude of different perspectives. Um, so roadmap forward, we've just released uh, uh, Compass, the, the software only. We d d debuted that back in April at the American Academy of Neurology meeting, uh, annual meeting. Um, we're now live as of the uh, 8th of October. Um, we're going for a, a 510K clearance and a CE mark on a improvement to the biosensor that you see here. And then once we're able to do that, we'll be able to have a, a, a brain monitoring service, as well as there's application in workers' compensation, where we can try to tell if somebody is uh, telling the truth with a soft tissue injury or a head injury. Um, and so we're exploring that. And then uh, finally, uh, some pro forma uh, uh, you know, statements here. We've been bootstrapping until the last uh, year or so, uh, started bringing outside investors um, uh, about 800000 has been raised, and we're now going out for our Series A uh, to raise roughly uh, $8 million to conduct the clinical investigations and do a much more extensive market launch, not only here in the U.S., but after CE Mark into the European market. Um, so uh, I will uh, then just speak to the uh, capitalization strategy. Uh, we've had a pre-seed round. Uh, in the last uh, six months, we've uh, had uh, three quarters of a million as shown here, and now we're really uh, beginning to try to uh, raise additional capital for that uh, market expansion and in the anticipation of both the 510K clearance for mid-year next year as well as the CE mark. And with that, I uh, thank you for your attention and would be happy to answer any questions you may have uh, about Sorora and our approach. Thank you. Yes, sir. Could you maybe have some rough ideas? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going through to be a medical device, and so the um, folks that are going to be able to collect the data have to be some form of a licensed, affiliated healthcare professional. So it would require a certified athletic trainer, a physical therapist, um, a nurse, somebody who has a license at some level to practice some form of medicine right. to collect the data. Okay, that ensures the integrity of the collection process. If it's through a doctor's office, it might be on a per scan basis, it might cost two or three hundred dollars. If it's to ensure uh, coverage over a uh, uh, a club team at your hockey rink. If there are 50 athletes, it may be that they buy into a subscription model of uh, $10 a month per athlete to go through the set of scans over the course of a six month season, let's say. Okay? And so um, we would be only able in the beginning years to work with affiliated healthcare professionals, if the rink had one, then we could probably find an installation uh, in that facility. If they did not, we'd need them to go to a minute clinic at a so pharmacy. Just, just give me some numbers. Yep. Some idea of what this is going to cost. Oh, uh, the, the cost of goods to sold to make the devices is sort of in the $200 for each unit, which is uh, amortized over 100 scans, a couple of bucks. Right. right? The market uh, health economic model says that we're going to have some price elasticity with the savings that comes. The big benefit here is that properly diagnosing concussion prevents a lot of bad things that happen afterwards. So from a, a third party payer, whether it's CMS or Aetna US Healthcare, we're going to be able to save them a lot of money by scanning folks. So we believe that charging three or four hundred dollars a scan through a medical reimbursement process is going to be possible. If, if we're now talking about the sort of baselining and others, the, the bar there will probably be more to have a very affordable $20 baseline that we don't analyze, but we hold in the database. And then if there's a putative concussion, then we follow up with uh, additional scans in the subscription model. Uh, the pricing on that, um, we're going to be figuring out over the next uh, uh, three to six months as we go to get our 510K. To what extent have you thought about Approaching EMS. Um, EMS uh, is an interesting market. There are a couple of other companies. InfraScanner has an infrared detector to look at hematomas that they want to get in ambulances and so forth. 
Um, we are definitely talking to emergency department physicians and trying to get pilot studies to look at somebody comes in and is very non-responsive, can we put a headset on and in two or three minutes develop a signature that they're on drugs and things of that sort. But if I'm candid, we're in the research phases of that use. Um, this platform that we're building, as you just pointed out, EMS and emergency department, has enormous flexibility to cover so a host of things. Who are the first markets? Who are the first 100 customers that will sign up with you? Who are they? Um, with the software-only product, they're going to be neurologists, neuropsychologists, and sports medicine groups that are working with colleges and high school okay. athletes. Okay, that's the initial, and then pediatricians turn out to be a very underserved population of physician. Also underpaid. <laughs> I can agree with that as well. Um, and we were just out at the American Academy of Pediatrics annual meeting in San Diego and had a very, very warm response to the approach we're taking because we're now starting to empower them into helping to figure out what this 13-year-old or 8-year-old looks like without having to refer them to a specialist, keeping them in their local practice, letting the biosensors make objective measurements, and then letting that be an adjunct to their best clinical impression. Okay. Can this Thank help, you. I'm sorry, can this help monitor seizures? Like there is a kid who has to have 48 hours AEG and it's a pain in the neck to put them to the hospital and wait there. A a absolutely, so when we get this through the 510K, we probably are gonna have a second lead for exactly that reason because our neurologists tell us that seizure monitoring is the most common use for EEG. Typical practice is you come in and you spend a half hour getting a 20 lead system with a little jock strap under the net and this and that, and they record you for 20 minutes. What's the probability you're gonna have a seizure in the 20 minutes you're actually hooked up to the instrument? Very low. So then you go home and they want you to come back and do a two-day ambulatory EEG. Well, the neurologists that we work with tell us that folks don't like to come in and have this done, and who wants to go shopping at your local supermarket with all this stuff around you? People come in on Friday, they go home and turtle for the weekend, they don't interact with society, and then they bring the recorder back in Monday morning and say, okay, did I have any seizure? Well, they often don't. They're missing a lot of information. So our belief is that if we can build this into a baseball cap or a fedora, or I know my wife would never wear a form factor that looked like that, so for a woman, a more feminine, floppy sort of hat um, to make it more uh, hidden but acceptable. If we can show comparable performance, but much higher patient acceptability, so that people can walk around in the mall, they can drive around and experience things, have Bluetooth go to their smartphone, or if they don't have one, they can be administered a recording device for the two or three days. We think there is a huge opportunity in meeting that need, but if I'm candid, that need is a small opportunity relative to concussion that's believed to be 3.8 million events each year here in the United States, or uh, you know, and that's an underestimate and so forth. So the, you're absolutely right, and we are looking to that as the CPT code that already exists that we could try to take advantage of uh, from a business perspective. Um, once we get through the 510K uh, clearance. What is your burn rate? Our burn rate right now is about 35,000 uh, a month and we've uh, you know, only just raised uh, uh, the three quarters of a million and so I have my foot moving from the bootstrapping of uh, up through last year to beginning to press on the accelerator and I'm waiting to line up the next uh, round of capital before hitting the gas completely. Uh, so that we have enough runway to uh, finance the, the next round. Other questions, please? Do you have any institutional investors in there right now, or is it just um, angels in front of the um, We have one angel group. We've got uh, folks wrote checks from 25 to 100,000. Um, we are, uh, GE uh, has a minor, very small position. Uh, as does Startup Health, uh, but that was not for capital, that was exchange for three years of uh, services, advice, network, and access. Um, so, so you seed round with a board valuation? Uh, it was a convertible note uh, that uh, pushed that question downfield. 
the Series A will be a priced equity round. Well, you will have a, a take up on the convertible there was a cap? There was a $6 million cap. What is your thinking on the price round? I'm sorry? What's your thinking on the price round? Um, we're going to let the market, uh, you know, I've learned from enough uh, others that that's more the market that uh, determines that uh, initial uh, position. So we're, we're going to wait for, uh, you know, lead opportunities and try to build a syndicate around that. Other questions, please? All right, thank you all very much.